If I can have your attention, we are going to call the, uh, the work session meeting of February the 6th, 2024 to order. We have uh, some guests from Mercy Medical Ministry and Clinic, uh, Marilyn Bopp and Dr. Dale Crosby. I'm going to ask them to come to the podium to my left over here, and they're going to make a presentation. As they move over there, um, they will tell you more about it, but they got some exciting things. Yep. Um, forgive me for not uh, equaling the dress code. I'm going to the ER after this. So, but uh, thank you for letting us come here. We are tremendously excited about letting you know that this ministry is moving to Opelika. Uh, real quickly, give you a history of Mercy Medical Ministry. Back in the 1850s, the word was, young man, go west, young man. My life traveled east. I went against that. I was born in Louisiana, raised there. Uh, some of my childhood moved to Mississippi, and be thankful for Mississippi. If it wasn't for us, you would be 50th in every category, but we were the 50th. But uh, I love Mississippi, but God in his good grace brought my wife and I and three of our children at that time to Auburn and Opelika where I could not think of a better place on the planet to put down roots and to raise a family. So we've been here 37 and a half years, have five children. Uh, they're all grown and gone. 30, at 37 years of age, uh, I think God impressed on me a dream and a thought of medical missions in Auburn, Opelika. I was returning from a trip in Africa and like so many churches, so many people in this uh, blessed area, we go off internationally and we do one to three weeks of medical missions. And I was returning to one, from one of those trips and very clearly, uh, I think, heard the Lord say, hey, Dell, what about medical missions here in Lee County? So about five years later, that dream became a reality. We settled down in Auburn, pretty close to Jordan, not Jordan here, but uh, the stadium where Auburn uh, High School plays football. We've been there 23 years, been a tremendous run for 23 years. And uh, now we are outgrowing our present facility. The hospital, East Alabama is giving us four acres off of, uh, what's it, DuPont? Dunlap. It? Dunlap, Dunlap, thank you. Uh, so we are thrilled about this. We hope to break ground within six months or so but we've got a lot of fundraising and uh, a lot of things to do. Uh, Randy Wilson is our architect. Uh, Scotty Led is our builder. Very excited about that. So <clears throat> with the uh, time remaining, I want to just describe what it's like for a patient to come to Mercy Medical. Mercy Medical is a, it's a Christian ministry mission that provides excellent medical care to the uninsured of this area. We have no geographic description. Some people come from Georgia, some from as far up as Roanoke, but uh, we're mainly centered in Auburn, Opelika. We are uh, volunteer driven, but we have a staff of 14 uh, paid uh, team members that are very dedicated. But if you are a person in Auburn, Opelika, you did not have insurance and you very much needed health care, you would call, make an appointment, you would arrive, and when you arrive at Mercy Medical, uh, generally speaking, an Auburn University pre-med student would meet you at the door, and they would bring you in, they would take your vital signs, they would find out why you're there, they would get to know you because they're tremendously excited to be a part of something like this. And then the clinician, either a volunteer physician, volunteer nurse practitioner, or volunteer uh, physician's assistant would go in and give complete medical care for this person who often has not had any access to care except my home, which is the ER, which is not the best place to get ongoing care. Uh, after that, uh, there may be a uh, two or three other people involved who helps orchestrate their their medicine that they need, and we have some incredible ways to provide that at near no cost. We may do x-rays, may do lab work, which East Alabama has graciously provided for us. Then the final person to go in is what we call a volunteer spiritual encourager. That is somebody that goes into every room and just meets them, loves them, prays with them, 
and if it leads to it, even may have a chance to share with them how they can have a personal relationship with the person who created them, that is the Lord. So that is our MO, that's what we're about. With this new facility, uh, we expand, hope to expand from 4,800 square feet to about eight or 10,000 square feet. So uh, we're tremendously excited. We're tremendously excited to move to Opelika. Love Opelika. Uh, it's a, I, I wish Auburn had kept its, its ambiance as well as Opelika. We're just destroying and building four and five story high rises and we long time Auburn people hate that. So y'all are doing a good job keeping your, your roots and I love that. So Maryland is going to spend some time being a little more specific on how you can be a part of it. Thank you so much for Lena, letting us be here. My name's Marilyn Bopp, and I am the steward of development. I'm going to talk really quick. I think that I've, I've got like what five, I've got five minutes. I think. Um, just um, so you know, about fifty thousand people in the state of Alabama um, lost their coverage in 2023. And we have over 15,000 people are uninsured in the Opelika Auburn area. Our waiting list is at 300 and it's growing to about three people a day. Um, just, I've got packets on there. Y'all can open those up if you want to glance at those and I'll walk you through it really quick. But just so you know what we do, in 2023, we had almost 3,000 patient visits, 435 were new patients, and this doesn't include pharmacy, social work, or nurse visits. Um, we had 947 unduplicated patients, and there were about 218 walk-ins. We are appointment only, um, and we you know, had to turn many of those away, but because of some new staff that we've added, I'm gonna tell you about that really quick, um, we think we can cover that, and we also think with this new staff, we're going to be able to double the number of patient visits. So we are super excited about that because more and more people are moving into Opelika and Auburn. Um, so we've got a prescription assistance program. It's on that first back page. I'm going to let you all just read about that on your own. I'm not going to go through that. But we did help um, secure over 1.7 million in medications with the pharmaceutical companies for people who can't afford their medication. Um, just so you know, when, a, um, when a, a, a patient comes in and they're uninsured, they're required to bring a um, Medicaid denial letter and they have to bring that in once a year. We also require a $35 fee office visit. Um, and of course, based on their household income, we lower that or even waive it if they can't afford it. So half of, because of we've hired a part-time physician, a full-time nurse practitioner and a part-time PA, it's gonna be about $200,000 added to our budget. But we think with our office visits, we can bring in at least half of that and then about 98,000 would come from donors. Um, all right, so on your packet really, really quick, I'm gonna just let y'all look at this, the community impact. Why, why should y'all support us? Uh, again, like what Dr. Crosby said, we keep the ER from getting backed up. We get the ER, I mean 60% of the patients that are referred to Mercy Medical, um, they end up um, establishing primary care that's key, the 60%. So if someone comes to the ER and they're uninsured, when they're discharged, they're immediately referred to us just so you all know. Um, okay, we have also EANC has given us 12 residents, which we're super excited about for a year. So they're rotating and coming once a week. So we're thrilled about that. That has helped us a lot. And then like doc, Dr. Crosby mentioned, um, nurses, pre-med students, pharmacy students, social workers, they come and have volunteer hours with us. So we're helping them, you know, you know to further their education. Okay. So turn to this page really quick. This is a map of where our land is. We're so excited about that. As Dr. Crosby said, it's on Dunlap Drive. It's four acres. We have 4,800 square feet right now. We'd like to have about 10,000. And the reason for that is we can double the number of examining rooms. And that way we can double the number of patients we're seeing. And again, like I said, that's growing daily. Okay, and then you flip one more page. Um, we are an open book and we just want
want you to see what's already been pledged and who has done the pledging. So I'm, I, I know Dr. Crosby mentioned those, so I just wanted you to see that. And we think, and we're probably going to need probably an additional $4 million to build the building, 10,000 square feet plus the equipment, and um, we need the city's uh, financial support. We need your support. Um, we feel like if we can raise about 40%, then the rest will come in probably pretty quickly, especially if we've got you know city and county support of Opelika. So that's, that's about it. Um, I think I don't think I ran out of my time. I think I'm, I'm done. Um, I also wanted to tell y'all in your little folder, there's a sealed um, envelope in the back, and we have a breakfast, and we are inviting y'all. We would love for y'all to come, and there's a QR code on there. You can just RSVP, or you can text or email me. Thank y'all so much for your time. Questions? Any questions, questions comments? I don't have any questions, but I'm familiar with um, what the work you already do, and, and I'm extremely impressed by it. And I just wanted to personally thank you all for the work that you do um, for our community. It definitely, definitely has a tremendous positive impact. So thank you for the work that you do. And um, when the city council gets to that point where we um, are ready to provide some support, I'm all in. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Marilyn. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, Doc. Let's see, we have uh, a, a bid. Good afternoon. We're asking the council to approve, a pur to approve the purchase of 10 Chevy Tahoes. The bid opening date was January the 22nd. The bid was mailed to six vendors. One bid was received. Recommend awarding the bid to Donahoe Chevrolet on their sold bid, meeting specifications in an amount of $495,670. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. We have the, um, the scouts or the, the young people that are going to be here, Samuel and Braden. We got two minutes. I'd like to call the Open Like a City Council meeting of February the 6th, 2024 to order. Call roll, please, Mr. Jones. Mr. Allen. Here. Ms. Norris. Present. Mr. Agent. Mr. Rout. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Uh, we're honored to have uh, Terrence Nolan from the Bridge Church with us. I'm going to ask him to make his way to the podium. He will lead us in an invocation, followed by Samuel McGinnis and Braden Jones, who will lead us in our uh Pledge of Allegiance. They are from West Forest Intermediate School, and we appreciate y'all being here for your uh, lovely principal. Uh, if you all would stand. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray today for supernatural strength for our city council leaders. We pray that you raise them up like Joshua so that they can be leaders of great courage. Help them not to fear the decisions that they have to make because you are with them. Father, we pray that they will not grow weary in well-doing. They will not grow weary in doing those things that are good and good in your sight. Encourage them to know that in due season they will reap all the things that they strive for because their heart's desires 
are a reflection of what's in your heart. Lord, we ask that you will help them to be strong and of good courage and that they will observe to do according to all you have commanded them. And Father, we pray that even though they may not know what to do in tough times, may their eyes, their ears, and their hearts always be fixed on you for the answers. We thank you, Lord, for granting supernatural strength, courage, and godly wisdom to all of our city leaders, not just for this day, but for all other days to come. We ask these things in your precious son's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You all have uh, previously received a copy of the minutes of the January 16, 2024 council meeting. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, they will stand as presented. Mr. Mayor. Mr. President, members of the council, each of you have received the uh, financials for the month of uh, December. As always, if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to somebody. We've got some folks to recognize tonight. Uh, let's get Chief Healy up here and Major Clifton, Lieutenant Converse, Sergeant Hood, Sergeant Stokes. Chief, we're gonna we're gonna recognize three of our officers. Would you tell us a little bit about your first officer? Yes, sir. So back on January seventh, and one of the things that's neat about this tonight is <clears throat> all three of these officers, these three life saving awards occurred within about two hours of each other. Um, so back on January seventh, about eleven fifty one at PM, officers were dispatched to a rescue call at Jones Trailer Park. Can't see with my glasses. <laughs> Upon arrival, officers were directed to a small bathroom where they located an unresponsive female who did not appear to have a pulse. Officer Salemno instructed other officers to assist him with moving the woman to the hallway where he quickly, appli quickly applied an automated external defibrillator, what we call an AED. The AED instructed to begin CPR and Officer Salemno gave two chest compressions when the woman reacted. He then began a sternum rub and encouraged her to breathe until she became more alert and responsive as medics arrived and took over care. Now let's get, uh, we want to go ahead and get Officer Smith up here? Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, Officer. Everybody give him his time. Now, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lieutenant, but Nick was part of this. He was a little bit mm -hmm. part of this there, second. There was actually a lot of people involved in that wreck that could have probably been put in for yeah. it. So we actually have a video that might describe this a little bit better than me just reading something. This happened about two hours after Nick said the lady was at Jones Trailer Park.
thought it'd be important to put a visual Country. to that. Um, um, this mm-hmm. started out with uh, an intoxicated young man who was passed out behind the wheel um, up on Oak Bowery Road. An officer went to check on him, and he drove off, fled the scene. The officer was not able to really give chase, but was coming back into town when he noticed a fire in the backyard. And, and I hate he's not here to describe it, but he told me, he said, I wondered, why do they have a bonfire in their backyard at 2 o'clock in the morning? And as he got closer, he saw the car parts and saw this car had driven through a fence and turned on its side and caught fire. Six of our officers uh, used their fire extinguishers, attempting to try to get that fire out, while officers Quintana and Denzel uh, broke out the back window of the car and got the young man out. Um, y'all come on up here, Jay. Jay. I should say about Gay is he's been out of the police academy. He got out in beginning of December, but he's only been on the road for a short period of time. And his dad's actually a firefighter, so it's kind of ironic that his uh, first life save is uh, in a situation that involved a, a car fire. So do our best. time I'd like to call our superintendent, Oak Rock City Schools, Dr. Carol Seymour, to uh, come up and join me because we're going to recognize the teachers of the year. Come up, Carol. Thanks, sir. It's good to have you today. Thank you all. Well, this is always a big night for the city council when we get to recognize some really outstanding educators. And uh, I know you're proud of this group. This is a really good group. Yes, sir. And thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Uh, we have wonderful teachers in Opelika City Schools. We have a lifeblood along with our great administrators and support staff who welcome students every day and just go above and beyond uh, to educate our children. And we're so proud of those here tonight and many others who represent uh, this group day to day and what they do. But uh, it is a big night and we're so thankful to recognize them alongside you all. Good. We're going to start with Opelika High School. I'd like for Kelly Fisher, the principal, to come up. And the secondary teacher of the year, Mandy Baker. I sure would. Ms. Baker is our education and training teacher, so she has a really special position of training up people who want to go into the education field after graduation. And I have one very, very quick story. Um, At a basketball game earlier this school year, I saw one of our former students, um, and she just recently got hired on at Northside. She went through Ms. Baker's program, decided that she wanted to be a teacher, and um, not only did she become a teacher, but she's right here in our own community doing that um, really great work that she kind of put that, that little spark in her. So, um, she's one of my first girls. Yeah. When I, when I first came to Opelika High School. Yes. So she's doing great work, and we're very, very thankful for her. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.
is my pleasure to introduce Branham Smitsky. Um, I met Branham six years ago at a job fair and I knew immediately whatever squirrel got her, we, she, she's going to be one of those game changers. Um, Northside was very fortunate that she chose to, to come to us and she has lived up to every expectation that we ever had. Um, she is all the things to all the people, um, students, parents, colleagues. Um, we are just tickled that, that she's at Northside and all that she brings to our school. Congratulations. Uh, Oklahoma Middle School, Keith York, Principal, Marta Harrison, Teacher of the Year. My pleasure to introduce uh, Marta Harrison. She's our choir director at Opelika Middle School. Does a fantastic job. Um, Opelika City Schools. We uh, put a big emphasis on our arts program, and Miss Harrison does a phenomenal job and does a great job building that program with our kids. And Marta Harrison. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Fox Run School first time for them. Yes, Miss Tamara Garner has been with Oklahoma City Schools for 26 years. Um, many of you may have had her, your kids <laughs> may have had her, um, but I'm so excited that she's decided to stay along with me at Fox Run for a little while longer and has not decided to retire on us. She um, teaches science, she leads extended day, and if you've known her throughout the years, she also taught at Northside School, and she was also a choir teacher at the middle school as well as science teacher. Good evening. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure and an honor to introduce you, Ms. Haley Thomas. She's a third grade teacher at Morris Avenue. She's been there the past eight years. Ms. Thomas is very passionate about teaching and student learning. She does a great job teaching her students how to think critically and to become better problem solvers. She does an awesome job as far as showing increase in student achievement during the course of the school year. I introduce to you, Ms. Haley Thomas. Rachel Myers. <laughs> so Tracy Myers is an English language learner teacher at West Forest. She is also a leader in Opelika City Schools EL department. She believes in children and sets high expectations for them. The children love Mrs. Myers and want to make her proud. She goes above and beyond to build relationships with the families of the children she serves and plans events to help them understand the importance of being involved in their children's education. Tracy is a team player and is willing to step in and help with needs at West Forest. She is always looking for ways to make West Forest the best that it can be. Did you bring a preacher with you? I did preacher's with you. Let me tell you, this is the best wheelbarrow operator <laughs> I know. She can't get her husband. He won't help. I know. With that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from uh, Carver Primary School, Joe Ross, Megan Pritchard. Good evening. Uh, 
Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Ms. Megan Pritchard. Uh, she is a second grade teacher at Carver Primary School. This is her seventh year. Uh, she's a leader among teachers, among her peers. Uh, she does a phenomenal job uh, with student teachers, new teachers, uh, visitors that visit our school. So it's, it's an honor to have her on our campus, a part of our school system, a part of our community. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you, Mayor, to the council, Ms. Megan Pritchard. Thank you. And her strengths include digging deep into new curriculum and helping her colleagues with better instructional delivery for student learning, being the first to step up to help uh, with special activities around the school. She served on Jeter's instructional leadership team and served as chair of our school uh, activities team. Laurel is a valuable member of Jeter's season staff and is deserving of this honor. So congratulations. She approaches every day with a, a strong work ethic and a positive attitude, and um, we appreciate everything she does for our students and our, um, our staff. So we miss her tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, y'all, we have, we have one more award, and uh, Dr. Seymour, you'll, you'll help with this one. Yes, sir. Could we get, uh, could we get uh, who's that guy that gets the thing, the principal in the <laughs> from middle school? Oh, Keith yeah. Moore. Uh, absolutely. Um, Mr. Chief York has been an educator for 31 years. Uh, he's been in Opelika for 17 of those years, and if any of you have ever worked with him or had kids come to the middle school, you know what kind of leader we're talking about here. Uh, very student-centered. Uh, he was fortunate enough to choose Opelika. Um, uh, upon the relocation a number of years ago, he and his wife, and we're just so thankful to have him as a leader in this system, impacting uh, children throughout this community, including my own. And uh, we have so many great leaders. Uh, I, I looked across uh, the wall here, and got some in the audience as well. We're honored to have great leaders, and uh, to recognize Mr. York as a two-time now winner of the Alabama Middle School Principal of the Year. Well, he'll go on to represent the state of Alabama later in the fall, and he'll be honored throughout the summer in the fall conference with our professional organization. Uh, it's, it's a high mark for him professionally, but it's also for a great reflection on our uh, school system and our community. So Keith York's an awesome leader, and I think we all know that, and we're just honored to celebrate with him tonight. Thank you.
Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, we, on behalf of the council, want to say thank you for taking the time to recognize these uh, these teachers and administrators. They make all the difference in our community, and it's uh, it's a proper thing to do. So thank you. A public hearing, is Mr. Jones. Mr. President, first public hearing is for a demolition at 106 Jeter Avenue. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue? Come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare the public hearing closed. Second and final public hearing is for a demolition at 1113 Lake Street. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Uh, general business, Mr. Jones? We got agenda related public comments first. Thank you. Okay, now it's time for us to the mayor and council about anything that is listed on the agenda. Please come to the podium to my left. If you have not already been signed your sign sheet with your name, personal phone, and email, do keep your full state name and address to keep the agenda up to date. Having no one, we'll go to general business, Mr. Jones. Mr. President, first item under general business is a request for alcohol license. This is Tienda El Paraiso, LLC, doing business as Tienda El Paraiso. This is a retail beer off-premise license. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call a roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Second item is a request for a downtown street closure. This is the Nourish Wellness 5K and One Mile Fun Run on February 24th, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have none. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Third item is a request for a downtown street closure. This is for the 2024 Auburn Flyers Bicycle Race event on February 25th, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a none. Call a roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have none. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Fifth and final item is a request for a downtown street closure. This is for the Burger Wars event on June 8th, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have none. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Uh, bids, Ms. Family. Question the council to approve the purchase of 10 Chevy Tahoes to be an opening date was January the 22nd. 
The bid was mailed to six vendors. One bid was received. Recommend the bid be awarded to Donahoe Chevrolet on the sole bid in specifications in the amount of $495,670. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Rupp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, resolutions, Mr. Gunner? Mr. President, the uh, first resolution authorizes the mayor to dispose of a 1992 Honda four-wheeler as surplus personal property of the city of Opelika. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a none. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Rowe. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number two authorizes the Public Works Department to purchase two Ford uh, F-150 Super Crew pickup trucks from Stivers Ford Lincoln at a total cost of $68,426. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. I have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have it done. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Rowe? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number three approves a quotation from CDW Government LLC for Zazar Safe Security Subscription Licenses and Maintenance Services. The cost over a three-year period is $162,725.11. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a night. Call a roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Rupp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number four authorizes the Parks and Recreation Department to purchase outdoor telescope casual furniture uh, for the aquatics project from Alabama Office Supply at a cost of $163,835 and 99 cents. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Rowe? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number five, approve certain tax abatements and exemptions from A&P Development, LLC. Um, A&P Development is the owner of a certain real property located at 155 Orr Avenue. Uh, this property was, uh, uh, is to be used as an office building uh, by Melee and uh, as its North American headquarters. Uh, A&P Development intends to invest about $3,370,200 in improvements to the building. And uh, so you have before you the uh, abatement petition and agreement and this resolution authorizes the abatements therein. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Rowe? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Uh, Golden State Foods has announced a major uh, improvement at its uh, facility located at, 14, at 4801 North Park Drive in the Northeast Industrial Park. Uh, they will be purchasing uh, and installing additional uh, manufacturing machinery at a total cost of $9,407,256. This uh, resolution will grant uh, tax abatements and exemptions for that new machinery. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Rupp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Uh, resolution number seven uh, approves certain tax abatements and exemptions from Melee Manufacturing Inc. Uh, this pertains to phase one of its project. Uh, Melee will be leaked will be leasing uh, 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 a warehouse located at 175 Orr Avenue, which is owned by 
PFI LTD in connection uh, with the, its uh, ability to perform light assembly work, warehousing, and distribution functions from that warehouse. Uh, Melee will be making improvements to the, uh, to the facility with a capital cost of $8,789,912, which will result in the creation of approximately 161 new jobs for the city. Resolution number seven uh, approves the tax abatements and exemptions for these improvements to the building. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? I have a non-call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. North? Aye. Mr. Rupp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted up. Resolution number eight approves a request for approval of, a, of an amended certificate of incorporation of the Utilities Board of the City of Opelika. The only <coughs> change that is being made is that the name of the public corporation of the Utilities Board of the City of Opelika will be changed to the Waterworks Board of the City of Opelika. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Uh, excuse me, there, we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? <coughs> have a none. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number nine approves the request of Auburn Flyers Cycling Club to hold a road bicycle race in downtown Opelika on February 25, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? I have a none. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 10 approves the execution of a settlement agreement and full general release uh, with advantage of advertising LLC. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Okay. Have a name call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. North? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 11 uh, approves the demolition of a building or structure located at 106 Jeter Avenue. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. I have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. North? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 12 approves the uh, demolition of a building or structure located at, 11, at 1113 Lake Street. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have an uncall roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. North? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 13 approves a special appropriation in the amount of $52,000 to Oak Lake City Schools to purchase musical equipment. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Before I roll call, I want to well, uh, introduce William DeShazo, who's standing in the back of the room. The idea of this uh, resolution that we are looking at uh, was his, and he has used it to honor uh, the Boy Scouts of America and is going to get his Eagle Scout through the work that he's done to, uh, to get this to us today. So, William, thank you. Call roll, please. Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Ordinances, Mr. Gunner? Mr. President, uh, the only ordinance before you is uh, ordinance number one, which is before the council for second reading. It comes to the council with a positive recommendation from the Opelika Planning Commission. If adopted, this ordinance will rezone a two-thirds uh, acre parcel of land located at 1016 and 1018 Alabama Avenue from an R3 CP district to a C2 GCP district. Is there a motion to uh, adopt this zoning ordinance change? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a call roll, please. Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. A 
appointments. Um, the first one uh, is a reappointment of Ms. Angela George to the Board of Zoning Adjustments for a new term that would expire February the 11th of 2027. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. North? Nay. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Uh, the second one is a reappointment of Mr. Chris Anthony to the Board of Zoning Adjustments for a new term that would expire February the 11th of 2027. Is there a motion to appoint, reappoint Mr. Anthony? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there a discussion? Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Nolan? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. And third uh, reappointment for the same Board of Zoning Adjustments is Mr. Wilbert Payne for a new term that would expire February the 11th of 2027. Is there a motion? So, so moved. moved. Do we have a motion and a second? Uh, call roll, please. Mr. Aye. Ms. North? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Now we're at the point in our agenda, the second roster of public comments. Uh, we open the, the uh, floor for public comments of items that are not on the agenda that you would like to address with the council. Having no one, we'll move on. Uh, the character trait of the month is leadership, the action of leading a group of people in an or, or an organization. Um, and that would lead me into uh, telling everyone that there will be a meeting in this room on Thursday the 15th at 6 o'clock uh, to discuss the potential rezoning and the purchase of the Renfro house. Uh, the buyers will be here. Uh, the Catholic Church has entered into an agreement with them and this topic was discussed at the Planning Commission and uh, so the uh, discussion will be held in here uh, in preparation of determining whether or not it would get on the agenda for our council meeting on the 20th. So we invite everyone to come uh, via an open forum and uh, we'll try to <coughs> control the time, uh, but uh, it will be uh, it will be an opportunity to speak for or against this issue so that we know how, how the public feels about it. You said this Thursday? Thursday the 15th, 6 o'clock in here. Next, Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Thank you. Uh, any other business coming before the council tonight? Having none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. North? Aye. Mr. Rupp? Aye. Mr. Smith? 